you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're wonderful to have you with us today and uh, listening in. Thanks for coming by one more time to the Chris Voss Show. Make sure you go and watch all the 700 podcasts that we have. Listen to them, capture them. We we might be doing some interesting things in the future where we might be doing like a throwback Thursday and bring Thursday, Thursday old retro episodes back. We're trying to decide what we're going to do with that. We've got a whole dearth of amazing authors on the show, including the most amazing we have today of course uh, we uh, will be talking about him in a second but in the meantime to see the video version of this broadcast go to youtube.com for us chris voss hit that bell notification it'll make you make you feel special like you're part of something a magical hug family of people that care about you and remember the chris voss show never judges you also go to goodreads.com for us chris voss you can also go to all of our facebook groups linkedin groups and instagram accounts as well today we have a most amazing Amazing author on the show. I was uh, actually came across him in Clubhouse, the Clubhouse app, if you're familiar with that. We were in one of the rooms and he was up on the dais there talking about the launch of his new book. The gentleman's name is Tim Story. He is the author of many books, but the latest one, The Miracle Mentality, Tap Into the Source of Magical Transformation in Your Life. Tim is my friend, life coach, humanitarian, nice guy. Welcome to the show, Tim. How are you? I'm great, and I was enjoying hearing your voice. Like, <laughs> when you did the intro, I was impressed, and I hear good voices. You can, like, barely sang. No one wants to hear me really sing. That's what it is. No, but I said barely. Okay. <laughs> Chris, right. what an honor to be on your program today. It's an honor to have you, my friend, and congratulations on the launch of your new book. Yeah. So this book, yeah, you never know when you launch a book, right? So I've been working on it for three years, Chris, um, writing it, rewriting it. I have an amazing editor, editor who is a, a teacher, a professor at Princeton University. And we would just go back and forth, back and forth. And I really think we've created some magic here. Awesome. I, I knew I knew that I knew I knew that it was brewing, but then it happened. And now it's selling like hotcakes. Is that still the same? Selling That's like awesome. hotcakes. Yeah. And I think you I think I heard you on another broadcast on my research said you guys sold a lot of books just off that clubhouse room that you did. Yeah, the rumor is over twenty thousand in one night, just wow. in just in the opening alone. But what's happening is my friends are being nice to me. Oprah's going to interview me, Steve Harvey. Um, just I'm going to do NBC Today show in three days, then ABC Good Morning America, then my buddy Gail King. So we're just going to roll. Just go help people to try to build up their mentality in the midst of all this mess we've been dealing with. That's awesome sauce. In fact, I've seen Gail on, on Clubhouse as well. Give us your plug so people can find you on the interwebs, check out your website, and order up the book. I think the easiest thing, Chris, is just Tim Story, but it's S T O R E Y dot com. So Tim Story dot com. Then you'll find out what I do. And we'll talk about the books and then we'll we'll talk about it later. But uh, Tim Story dot com. There you go. So do you wanna talk about what motivated you to write the book or do you want to talk more about what you do right now because you mentioned you might want to talk about it later i'm open to it you asked me the question and i will answer because this is the chris voss show let's move some books first how about that so okay. uh, tell me why you wrote this book all right so can i pick it up and show it yes yes okay watch this yes please do you feel the magic oh i feel it it's I coming feel near the magic. you it's coming near you <laughs> it's coming near you it's like 3d <laughs> Just okay. amazing. So, Chris, being that we're friends, look at this first chapter, Discovering the Miracle Mentality. Here's what I found out. 
Little kids, they love to imagine. They love to believe that there's more to life than what they see. You, you, you would agree with that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because when I go to speak at these schools for kids that are like six and seven years of age, because I speak to all ages, and I'll say, what do you want to be? An astronaut, little girl, a ballerina. It's, it's, it's something like magical. So discovering your miracle mentality. And then I talk about chapter two, toiling in the mundane, the messy, and the mad. Here's what happens to us. We start off as kids with these magical thoughts. And then guess what happens? Life interruptions start to hit you. Maybe you're a kid. Find out you got asthma. Maybe you're a kid. Your parents get divorced. Maybe you're a kid. Something bad happens to you. Maybe you got bullied. And I find that what happens is that all of a sudden, people go from what I call the recovery zone, okay, which is like stuff they're going through. And they're so deep into that recovery zone, they have a hard time going into what I call the discovery zone. Mm -hmm. So as, as, as adults, most people that I know don't spend much time in the discovery zone. So I'm teaching you in this book how to realign yourself with your miracle mentality. There you go. We lose that innocence as, that we had of as a child when we look at the world as a in a in a in a in a great thing of, of possibilities and wonderment and curiosity and learning, and then we get jaded as adults, don't we? No doubt about it. And you you use some amazing synonyms. It's like you walk around with a dictionary. <laughs> it's, not, it's not too bad. I went to public school otherwise, that, but that was that was good. <laughs> Because I'm a bit of a wordsmith, man. You were just laying down every synonym, synonym right there. But there's no doubt about it. We, we lose this wonderment. And what I talk about in the book is we have to live in the mundane. The mundane is trash day, throw your trash. Got to wash your dishes. You got to keep your house clean. Got to go to the DMV. You got to get your registration tags and actually put them on. Get my point? That's like mundane yep. stuff you got to do. But when these life interruptions happen from life coaching people for over 30 years, I find that the messy gets into their mundane, okay? And now you got the mundane and the messy. So you're not really looking to think like miracle, magical thoughts, extraordinary thoughts, because, man, you're just trying to deal with your mundane and your messy. <laughs> There you go. It's hard to get. It's hard to get really excited when you're taking out that trash. There's not a lot. No doubt about it. Okay, but let's talk about Bessie. Let's talk about COVID nineteen. So February of last year, we were just like flowing. Heard some stuff on the news about some things were going on. And in March, people are wearing masks. We're quarantined, and uh, people are nervous. There's a lot of fear that hit people. People lost jobs, and then it gets really messy and for some of us that people died because of my background i have a doctorate in world religion i just officiated two funerals in the last four weeks so this is real stuff and mm -hmm. both covid related so my point is is that this is real stuff that's going on but at the same time as the mundane and the messy if you're not careful it goes to the third stage in my book and that's the mad the mad or the madness mm. when everything is just chaotic, okay? And let's think about this for a minute because a lot of people, Chris, haven't you seen some of your friends start to struggle? Yeah, we've all been struggling with this, with this, with this uh, coronavirus thing. This pandemic mm -hmm. has just been quite upending. Upending is a good word. So I decided to write this book and this is more than just easy stuff. Really help people walk through this. Because I believe that life is still good. But I think that you have to make room for magical moments. Mm -hmm. And I think that people are so caught up in this messy and the madness that they're not making time for magical moments. Give me an example. Yes, please. Tell us what they are. Okay. It's like little kids, right? So I don't know this about you. Do you have any children? No. Okay, so I do, but my children are not so little anymore. But when they were little, they would say, hey, Dad, can I play? Okay, but first you got to clean your room. But hey, but then can I play? 
but you got to go to school today. But but then can I play? You get my point? Mm-hmm. So when they're in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, it's all about playtime. So I did a lot of research, and I have some researchers too, which makes me extra special. So I have researchers and myself who found this thing out about play kids and play. The one reason they like to play is it gives them an opportunity to manifest in the area of their imagination. Mm. That's why little kids have like imaginary friends. And one of the things that kids like to do, remember the sandbox? That's almost like a thing of the past. I love the sandbox. Okay. So kids could go in a sandbox forever and they could have, I wish I had a cup here, but they could have one cup and just scoop and then play and then play and scoop and right. Yeah. Okay, so I think that as adults, we almost lose that time that when we were kids was like our playtime. Mm-hmm. And, and some silly person will say, I still got mine. I like to go have drinks with the boys. I'm not talking about that. that. That's more of a social life. But I'm talking about taking time to be creative and let your imagination soar. Man, that's there's some beautiful things in life when you do that. And what's the best way to make that space in your life? Because that's the biggest problem people have is they're always running around chasing this, that, and the other, and, and they don't make space for it. Okay, so number one, for those that are taking notes back at home, number one, you don't have to take notes because you have such a good mind. Number one, you need to wake up. And to wake up, as I looked at the dictionary, means to come out of a place of sleep. You're asleep, you need to wake up. Conscious. Oh, I'm awake. So if you are living in the mess, are living in the madness, and you feel like you're a discount version of yourself, you need to wake up. Okay? You need to wake up. So this show today is going to help wake you up. Tim Story is going to help you up. Chris is going to help you. Here we go. No one, you need to wake up. Secondly, Chris, you're going to love this. You got to take inventory. You got to say, okay, it's been a pandemic. It's been a little long. It's been about a year now, a little over a year, right? Quarantine. Mm -hmm. People like in Texas, they're not so much quarantine. (laughs) But, okay, I got to take inventory. How am I doing physically? How am I really doing in the clarity of my mind? How am I doing with my family? How am I doing with my singleness? How am I doing with my dog or my cat? How's my job doing? How's my money doing? So you you wake up. Secondly, you take inventory. Ooh, this is good because the inventory is tough because people don't like to really look at the facts. (laughs) Sometimes that mirror isn't as glamorous as as you want it to be. Okay. Third is so powerful. You have to partner with the right people, Chris. Chris. You got to partner with the right people. All it takes is one bad apple to spoil the whole bunch, to quote Donny Osmond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that I was grew, a song. Was I, a grew song. Up, I grew up watching him as a kid. I think I was a teenager when the Osmonds were on. Yeah. So, so partnering is really important then, right? You got to partner with the right people. Okay. And what, what do I mean by that? You need to get around people that have a positive mindset that in the midst of everything that we're going through, that they that they are speaking positive words to you. If you're ill, like, hey, what do we need to do? We'll help you get better. Or your daughter's acting up. Hey, let's try to get them through. So you have to partner with people with the right mindset, that have the right mindset, okay? And have the right motives, okay? So mindset and motives are very important in this whole partnering with the right people. So you become awake, take inventory, partner with the right people. Then here's what you need. You need you need principles. Principles? I need to have principles too? Principles, yeah. Like principles are in this book. I talk about having character, honoring your word, prospering where you're planted. It's almost like Stephen Covey's book, like the his 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 book that he did on the principles. That was a good book. John Maxwell writes good books on principles. But this has all kinds of principles and it has an assessment area 
where you could assess where you think you are with your principles. So what are your standards? What do you live by? So for me, I'm a, a, a Bible guy. So I like to read the Psalms and the Proverbs, and I do that every single day. So I put certain principles into my soul so that my principles will create a practice, okay? So you have to have, to have the right principles, okay? Out of the right principles, now you create the right plan. And I'm going to tell you, because I've been coaching people 30 years, you cannot create the best plan unless you're clear in your mind, clear the clutter, okay? You got to have the right principles before you start writing down that right plan. Do you like this so far? I love it. I love it. These are great. Wake up, take inventory, partner with the right people, principles, and plan. Yeah, get out of the right plan. I think people are making plans from a bad place. Never make old, decisions from a bad place. Big decisions. What's that old saying? If you don't plan, if you don't fail, if you don't. If you fail to plan. Clearly, clearly I didn't plan this. <laughs> if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but Chris, this is what I do for a living. So just, just, there be, you go. just be Chris Voss, okay? Don't try to get in my lane, buddy. <laughs> I'll stay in my list. That's like telling Tony Robbins, hey, Tony, let me tell you about the principles of power. I pulled the George Bush. I was totally turning it the other way, the <laughs> yeah. wrong way in my head. If you, <laughs> fool me once. If you, you, know. if you fool me once. <laughs> when he did that, it was funny. <laughs> I've seen that video. Chris, this is, a side, this is a side of me that people don't know. I've never said it on anybody else's show. I've seen that video about 10 times on YouTube. Because it's so cute. Yeah. Because I like George Bush. In fact, his daughter, Jenna, is interviewing me on Thursday. That's awesome. On the That's NBC awesome. Today show. Nice. So I like the Bushes. They've yeah. been nice to me. But anyway, I've seen that video about 10 times because it was funny. All right. So principles in the plan. The plan is so important. Chris Voss. Because life is still excellent. But what's your plan? So why do I need the right plan, Tim? Because this pandemic has created three things. Ooh, the motivator is going to motivate. Number one, delays. Ooh, we've been delayed. Mm -hmm. I'm in line. Everywhere I go, I'm in line. Gotta, oh, I'm in line and I have a mask. And I've got to be six feet back. Look. <laughs> I've had my shots, so you're fine. Okay. Mostly rabies, though. I'm coming closer. <laughs> okay so watch we've all had delays we've all had denials mm. Ooh, delays are one thing denials that can hurt denied of a job Ooh, look at this denied it was your graduation you can't walk it what it's your, it's your wedding and you, you can't have humans there? Delays, denials, and here goes the third one, detours. Mm. Think of so many of our friends, Chris Voss show. Watch, detours. They don't know how to handle them. They, 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 they don't even know how to put on their own navigation. <laughs> <laughs> someone move my cheese. <laughs> yeah, someone move my cheese, detour. Dorothy, get back on the yellow brick road. <laughs> <laughs> the next book by Tim Story. <laughs> All right, so tell me what you think about my uh, action plan uh, so far, Chris. On wake up, let me ask you this: on the wake up principle that you have, does does that is that bearing into being present? I got into Eckhart Tolle's "Be Present" book, and uh, and that was a wake up moment for me because I felt like I was really drifting. Is that is being present? Maybe you part of that? hit it spot on because. Eckhart Tolle talks about the power of now. And to be in the power of now, which I am, I, I literally live in it. And I got it coming at me from every direction. When you're the comeback coach to the stars, there's a star needing me right now. So I have learned to be in the power of now. I am fully present, fully feeling, and fully alive. Most people are constantly distracted. 
Somebody else's urgent is not necessarily yours. That's true. That's true. Can you repeat that? I was texting. No, I'm just kidding, Tim. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, we do some of that on the Chris Foss show. We're known for it. Waking up, being present. That was something I struggled with. I, I was I was in real fog for a few years and I was struggling just to identify my I have dog kids. So I, I was like, they're here and I'm here, and I'm just not I'm not in the moment. And so that was a real struggle. So I love that concept. Wake up, take inventory. I thought this was really important uh, yeah. because a lot of people don't. And it, it is hard for people sometimes to go, what is my financial situation? and Or what is my relationship with? And stuff like that. And it's hard for people to sometimes face questions that they're like, they may not like this answer. What do you think? What do you think is the best way to approach that if you don't like the okay, answer? So listen, the take inventory thing is difficult for me. I'll give an example. I would say six months into the quarantine, I started to feel it. So I, I, I went to a very nice part of Southern California because I live in Southern California, but I don't live by the beach. But I went and I got a hotel for, for two days by myself, overlooking the ocean because I just needed to breathe. I needed to see something different. I was going stir crazy in my own house, but yet I didn't tell people about it because Tim's story. But man, just to get out and take early morning walks and see the seagulls, really not even joking with you. Yeah. And then to go to a little restaurant and have my mask on. And one of my buddies, a guy who's a creative, met me for dinner one night. It was just nice to talk to a human being like that. And then get back out there the next morning and and walk on the beach and see the seagulls. Two days of clearing my mind so set me into a better place. And that was because I took inventory and I realized I had gone from mundane to messy myself. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Taking inventory is not always easy, but we got to do it. I used to do that too. I, I I learned as an entrepreneur that when I get burnt out or fried, instead of trying to do that once a year vacation thing, I take weekend vacations like you did. I go down to Santa Monica's Fairmont and get a room there, and and I would open up the windows and literally sometimes strip the bed, put it on the little patio there, so I could fall asleep or listen to the waves crashing. There's now you just of- I'm I'm smirking. Because you just mentioned one of my getaway places, that yeah. hotel. Yeah. The so my mom. friend, my mm-hmm. friend runs the bungalow, which is that nice restaurant outside that overlooks the ocean. The famous Brent Bolt House, whose parents, his in-laws are part owners of the Golden State Warriors. That's one of my best friends of 25 years who has the bungalow. So I love the Fairmont. Then you got to cross the traffic light. Yeah, to get across the street, but how beautiful is that stretch? Oh, it's beautiful. It's and then you nice. go to the le- look to the left, and you see the Ferris wheel over there, don't you? Yeah. If I can't get in the Fairmont, I go to the Lowe's down the block. Another great place. Yeah, beautiful. I love I love going in the atrium of that place, and they have the whole line of the the palm trees. Do you see how you're feeling better just thinking about it? Yeah. In fact, I gotta go, Tim. I'm I'm going to the. Oh my, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'll, I'll finish off the Chris Voss show. <laughs> this is this is Tim Voss. Just meet me there, Tim. We'll have it's, lunch. We'll it's finish Tim, recording. It's part. Tim Voss, the brother you've never heard about. <laughs> just we'll just meet at the Fairmont, and we'll just do the we'll do the rest of the show there. Do exactly. the rest of the show there. My goodness, I'll do the show live. So partnering with the right people, I love this part too. When when. When the when the, everything started falling, events started canceling. We the Chris Voss show. We do a lot of events. CES yeah. and shows South, South by Southwest. We have massive sponsors, massive packages that we do, and we take the show basically remote. And so we we bring in a lot of money doing that, speaking of course, and all that stuff that we all lost. Yes. And so watching just the domino slowly fall of just money evaporating for the year was just. It was it was hard to deal with, and I entered this kind of little dark depression. And one of my friends, Robert Scoble, he put on Facebook. He said, "Here's what you do right now. It's real simple. It's, Here's what you do right now: you either find a lifter or you be a lifter. One of those two things. Ooh. Decide what you're going to be, 
and go do it. Is that his original saying? I believe so. I'd have to check with him. We're good friends, so I'll, have, I'll ask him for you. Find a lifter. Or be a lifter. Or be a lifter. Yeah. And that got me out of my funk. It took me a little. I had to fake it till I make it. And so I said, look, okay, he was he's always my lifter. And so I said, how can I, what assets do I have? I took an inventory, like you said. And I said, you know what? I have the Chris Voss show. I have an audience. I have people listening to me all over social media platforms. People love you. They, I don't know about that. Let's not push it. But. I've heard that. <laughs> They, they. I think it's more uh, like disgust and hate, but but still, they follow me because they want to see when the car is going to crash and burn. I've seen I've seen those tweets on Twitter. Actually, they're funny. But anyway, I so I took inventory and I said, what what can I do? Well, what am I good at? And I'm like, yes. I'm, being, I'm good at being a lifter. I'm good at being an inspirer. I'm good at being there. So I've just got to fake it till I make it. And I did a bunch of shows. They were really hard to do. It was really hard to get in the lifter gear because I really wasn't in the thing. But I knew if I pushed it, that if I worked to try and be a lifter. And and what's nice is I lost a lot of my companies that we built over 20 years, uh, a bunch of them with the crash in 2008. And yes. I had a toolbox that I learned from there after I had to reinvent myself and, and become someone new and, and establish new companies. And so I fell back in that toolbox and went, okay, I know how to do this. I, this was hard in 2008, but now I know what to do right now. And so I started digging out of that toolbox and sharing out on the podcast. And the first, honestly, the first three or four episodes were really hard to do because yeah. I was trying to be a lifter. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not really the guy who should be lifting right now. But I hear you. Really, that really helped me. And eventually we got some, uh, we got, you know, really good shows that gave people really good data. And hopefully we helped some people through that. Chris, it is so true what you're saying. And so whether you want to call it, karma or you reap what you sow there's no doubt about it is that what you make happen for someone else life will make happen for you that's true so my life since i was a teenager is i've been a humanitarian i've now been to 75 countries of the world helping change people's lives and i could be like half blown up in my personal life and when i would still give back it's amazing how healing that was. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a law wherever you think it comes from. Yeah. I believe it comes from God, but I believe you reap what you sow. And there's, there's no doubt about it. And I think that even in people's pain that they should be a lifter. Yeah, definitely. And one of the things that came out of it is we changed the format of the show. We opened it up to all authors and even nonfiction people. And we've inspired, done a lot of social justice shows and helped people do better. And I think we changed the world more now. I love this show more than ever in all the years I've been doing it. Principles was an important thing. Do we want to get rid of people that are that are the emotional vampires, the drama vampires, the negative vampires, the manipulators okay. in our life? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this really cool. Because a lot of people speak on these topics, and that's what they always like to go to. Get rid of the haters. Okay. So here's, I'm going to give you the three levels of, of people that we usually deal with. And this is, this is going to sound very simplistic, but I, I dialogue with an amazing therapist who's just brilliant at that crazy level about this. And she says, Tim, this is so good. So number one, First level of intimacy of people is the casual. Hey, Chris, this is Tim. Tim, this is Chris. You like bass fishing? So do I. Oh, my God. We should go bass fishing. You're from North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. That's like the casual friend. That's what we, we just encounter all the time. The second level of connection, human connection, is the intimate. Intimate. Now, many times the intimate you did not vote those people in. They're your family. Okay? <laughs> I've seen this movie. All right. You're going to have to see them at Thanksgiving and Christmas for sure. That's your intimate. Could be your brother. If you're two boys, you had to sleep in the same room. Sister had to sleep in the same room. You, you really didn't have that much in common, but they're intimate. They got the same last name. And then you got some cousins. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> then you guys may have to do a once-a-year family reunion, and I'll put the Voss family. <laughs> 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 
Isn't this great? Yeah. That's the challenge. Is that that intimate place is where people get jacked up. Because many times they share their secrets with people just because they're their family. Mm-hmm. Or it's their cousin. Or it's their coworker. Or it's somebody else that has a similar platform as you doing business and, and an entrepreneur and all the things that Chris Voss does. And I think that people get entangled with the wrong people. Okay. In that intimate level, because they're not making the right choices. Mm -hmm. I'm a pro at this. Trust me. The third level is the invited guest. Ooh, this is so good. Just because you know them doesn't mean you need to invite them. <laughs> I just officiated a wedding. There's a show on HGTV, okay? And they have a, it's called Flip or Flop. The, the lady on the show, Christina, is my great friend, okay? And so don't say, don't say anything because she's my great friend. Now, she also has another show, Christina Life by Design. Her best friend, Cassie, got married, and I officiated the wedding. Okay? Awesome. So, because I do stuff like that. So I'm, I'm going to tell a story about this. So I was talking to her, and I said, how many people are coming to the wedding? So she gave me the amount. Okay? But she has a lot of friends, because she's one of the most amazing women I know, Cassie. And But she can only invite so many people, because she can only invite so many people. Is it, that's interesting, right? Same thing in our life. Some of you are bringing people that should be casual friends into the invited guest section. Mm. Bringing them in deep. Deep, deep, deep. How you doing, Chris? Just because they ask the question doesn't mean that you have to give them the answer. Mm. I I don't give people straight answers if I don't know them. Mm-hmm. I got to I got to know their motives. What's your motive? Why are you asking me that? Why do you want to know? Why do you want to know how much I make from speaking? Why 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 do you want to know? What's it like to be so handsome? Like, really? Do you really want to know that? Yeah, I just want to know your routing number and your account number and your bank. My account. I want to give my phone <laughs> number away today. My phone number, Chris, is five 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 five. I want to give that away. <laughs> So would you say this would be like boundaries, good established boundaries? Is that you what it right is? there? Okay. A great book. A great book too. Boundaries. Towns wrote that book with his buddy. Mm-hmm. Boundaries. This is all about boundaries. I'm a master of boundaries. Mm. So I could be talking to Chris Voss and I'll throw in Grant Cardone. Mm-hmm. Two friends of mine. Let's say we're having lunch at the Fairmont. Let's take it up a scale. We're having brunch. Because we're the kind of guys. Yeah, we're brunch guys. We're brunch guys. We're, we're brunch. We're brunch guys. We own it. I got and then, we'll and then some, to say that. And then some guy, let's say some random guy comes in and goes, oh my God, dude, freaking A, can't believe it. It's Chris Voss. Totally does not even pay attention to Grant, doesn't even pay attention to me. Pays attention to Chris. And says to us, hey, I'm a fan of Chris Voss. Can we sit down? We have the right to say, you seem like a great guy, but we're having a a conversation we've been waiting to have for a while. That's boundaries. There you go. Is that so good? Is that so good or what? Come on. That's that's important. Yeah, Grant's really awesome. Talked to him a few times on uh, Clubhouse. In fact, we're usually on a dais together always. His wife follows me, which is really cool. I thought that was... Elena is one of my great friends. Yeah. She is the one that told me about Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And she used she was going to use her one ticket to get her buddy, Tim Story, on there. And she got you on, and that's how we met, the serendipity of all. You see? So your last point with plan, what is, what's a good plan? Or uh, I'm, We want people, of course, buy the book so they can really get the details. But The oh. thing about, of course I want to give some more. And the thing about this thing here, okay, can I tell you that I'm not on a sales tour and this is the truth? Because to me, I'm not a salesy guy, but I think that's why it works for me. When I speak at these conferences, 
they all say I set records for how long I have to sign stuff. I'm there sometimes four or five hours signing because I connect to the soul. And when people connect with you, then they want to say, holy schmoly, this guy's making sense. I want. So there's no sales thing here. I'm just telling this thing could take you to another level. So this idea of the plan is not enough, but a plan is a, is a, is a scheme, is a scheme. It's an, it's an intention. Okay. So you got a plan, but most people's plans are coming out of a place of a mess. If you're in a messy place, you're going to, you're going to create a messy vacation for you and your kids. Yeah, that's true. Right. Then you see the Chevy chase movie. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that, that was in a, it was in a mess. <laughs> He just kept doing stupid stuff. <laughs> you got the plan, and then guess what you need next? Once you got the plan, you need persistence. Ah, persistence. Write that persistence down. That's always good. Let me write this down. You need persistence, people. You got to stick with the plan. I do a lot in Beverly Hills, right? So my office was in Beverly Hills forever. I lived in Beverly Hills forever. So here's the deal. You get around people like, you go eat with them in a nice restaurant. We'll, we'll, t- we'll take the Polo Lounge, Beverly Hills Hotel. And so maybe the, the wife of one of my friends says, oh, I don't eat that anymore. I'm vegan. Okay. How long have you been vegan? A day. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to California. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to, to California. LA. <laughs> LA. Yeah. But catch her, catch her in three weeks. She's something else. Then catch her in four more weeks, something else. So common, not just with women, men, just people in general. You got to be persistent. Mm -hmm. You got to keep on keeping on, right? You know, I got to learn how to push through. I do that different thing, though, but it's mostly with my multiple personalities. Yeah. My psychiatrists are working on that. But the, the multiple personality thing is working for you because you see your wit is, is everywhere. You're like a Jim Carrey with a slower delivery. Yeah, yeah. It's He drinks more coffee than I do. That's what it is. But as long as I, my psychiatrist and the judge says, as long as I stay away from the voices that say kill, 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 that personality, I'm okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, and you're and, and, and you're allowed to be on the air still. My, my parole agent's in the other room, so he's just waiting for me. So this is awesome. Persistence. Persistence, because you if you you if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And if you're not persistent about that planning and executing, you're not get back, get back up. See, I think so many people like let me tell you a confession. All right, here we go, guys. We're about to get the confession from Tim. This is a confession. So I am not a great snow skier. I have been two times. The first time I took lessons, okay? Took lessons the first day. Second day, I went out there and I did something where they call snow plowing. I basically just did this, okay? So it was all guys, like guys who do well in life. And they're like, come on, Tim. Whoa, Tim Story. What? Come on. This is not what I expected. They're like, okay, I'm from Compton. That's not really what we aspire to become. Snow skiers. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. I grew up in SoCal. I was not into skiing. I still am not into skiing. Okay, but just here. here, So the second time I went skiing, okay, I'm trying to tell you it wasn't much better. (laughs) I was still like snow plowing. I I was a little afraid. But guess what? They were little kids. Whew, whew, zoop, zoop. I think one went through my leg. Whew. <laughs> that's what the that's what the sticks are for to hit them with when they go by. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna trip them up. But show them. So now I got I got these friends of mine, fancy friends, and they all want to keep taking me snow skiing, and I've decided to stop avoiding it. So I probably within the next two weeks because it's still that season here in California, I'm going to go up to those mountains up there, to Big Bear, and I'm going to take 
lessons, or I might go to Utah or somewhere, and I'm doggone it, Chris. I'm going to be persistent. Mm-hmm. Do you like this? Do you like this coming out of me? I'm 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 going to do it. I love this. I'm going to get back up. As long as you don't go full Sunny Bono and ski into a fucking tree, we're all cool. Exactly. That's the (laughs) crap that I read and saw that scared my chocolate self. (laughs) So I I was afraid, oh, I'm going to fall. Oh, then I'm going to get up. Then I'm going to fall. Then I'm going to get up. I'm going to fall. Welcome to the world, Tim Story. Get your chocolate self out there. Get some skis. And fall and get up and get better. Yeah. Do you I, like this? Do you like this the, as, as I a life this. coach? I like love this? this. The whole reason I don't ski is because I'm against trees, though. That's just for me, though. But that's me. I'm listening. <laughs> so some other chapters in your book, Activating the Magical. Do we want to talk about that just a little bit? Heck yes. Okay. I believe that most of us believe in magic. Magic scares people that word they think oh the paranormal that's only eight percent of its usage magical means extraordinary Mm -hmm. that's me i like that uncommon watch this watch tim's story just start rhyming here not normal okay uncommon not normal supernatural extraordinary so this guy walt disney walks into an amusement park in the in the 30s and he says i'm gonna build my own amusement park but mine's gonna be watch different better and more magical 1955 disneyland opens cost about 18 million dollars what walt disney saw prior to it opening was orange groves you're from california Mm -hmm. orange county Mm -hmm. orange groves he saw orange groves but he also saw Disneyland. This is beautiful. So magical thinking had him thinking from the 30s to 1955 till it opened and then it went beyond and all the things he did. He said, I'm going to do my own amusement park, but it's going to be different, better, more magical. That's what I'm looking for from people. There you go. I believe your life is supposed to be different, better, and more magical. So we should look for those moments in our family, in our interactions with clients and different The things. magic is everywhere. So watch this. We always think it's like a big event. Oh, my God, I went to Coachella. I saw this band. They blew me away. No, that's not what I'm saying right now. Magic is everywhere. Magic is in the fact, look how well we get along. Mm-hmm. Okay? We're having a magical conversation that's, that's going to help a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Magical is also this. Like going to your kid's soccer game and actually paying attention and not texting and seeing that the little rascal finally scored a goal. And then he looks up to see if you saw it, but you're like, down here. <laughs> you just missed the magic, yeah. Karen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm Chris. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, though, what I'm saying. Good, yeah. So the other day, the other day, I was busy being Tim's story. I was feeling it. I was feeling the Tim story. I was feeling it. All kinds of stuff was going on. My people were around. They were telling me all this amazing stuff happening. I write for American Airways Magazine every month. Every month I'm in the magazine. United Airways Alliance every month. 90 airports. If you travel, 90 airports of the world. There's a big screen. You'll see my face, me motivating people. All Mm -hmm. the restaurants, you got to deal with me. I'm in 1 million hotel rooms. Holy crap. No, for real. 1 million. But when you turn the TV on, there I am. Hello. Sorry. Can't get away from me. Okay, so we were talking about all that, but instead of it, like, firing me up, it was stressing me out. Mm -hmm. I was feeling stressed out. So I don't smoke cigarettes or anything like that. So I said, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I feel stressed out. So I snuck away from my staff, and I went to my backyard. And I said, guys, I just need to uh, check my emails. I just want to get away from people. Go to my backyard. Chris, I'm going to tell you something awesome. This may bring a tear to your eye. You're sitting there, a little stressed out, even though I'm in all, all these things are happening. People are loving me. Oh, my God. Look at me. Life coach to the stars. I'm outside. Out of nowhere, three butterflies come by. They come so close to my face. I'm not kidding. I almost felt it. They come by. I'm not joking. They go like this. They circle. And they swing by again. 
So I call a friend of mine who's into stuff like this, the lady. She goes, describe them. So I describe them. She tells them what kind of butterflies they are. She goes, that is so unusual hmm. to see three like that together. And she explained all these different things that we won't talk about right now, but she explained all these things about butterflies. So I feel that if I had had my head down, just caught up in all my craziness of life that hits me sometimes, it hits us all, I would have missed the magic. Yeah, most definitely. That, most definitely. That was a cool thing. And then the, it was almost like they said, let's go back. He's awesome. And they curl back. Yeah. Maybe they need coaching, though. Maybe that yeah, was. That could yeah, have been it. Probably that needs butterfly coaching. So the magical is not, the magical, Chris, is not just like way out there. Way out. There, I'm going to be. No, the magic is in, I'm alive. Man, I'm alive. Mm -hmm. I've been through so much in life. My father died when I was 10. My brother died at, a, at an early age. My sister died in a car accident where a friend was driving. Out of seven people in our families, three have passed away. I could have woke up today just being pissed. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need this crap. But no, I look for the magic. Yeah. You got to look for the magic. I remember when my dog, I had, I had my husky I had cancer for a year and a half and I was hospice carrying her and I was really angry about a lot of things. And I don't think I was dealing with it well. And, and a lot of times she would just come by once a day, go potty outside, come back in. And she, she didn't want to be messed with when she was going through what she was going through. She was old too. She's, she's kind of like I am now. She's like, don't mess with me. I just leave me alone. Let me sleep. And, and so a lot of those moments went by when she would finally come out and I wouldn't try and jump on them and go, let's, let's spend uh, some magical time together. And so now yeah, I love with, this. I love this already, but keep coming. But I love this already. And so now with my dogs that I have now, I try and take moments out when I when I'm in my day where we go play in the yard and I I schedule time I go we've got to go at least spend 15 minutes with the dogs outside. Yeah. And and I look at them and I pet them and I look in their eyes and I make connections and I and I think about how beautiful and it great it is that they're in my life right now and how blessed I really am. And it really helps me focus on them, their importance to me, my love of them. And they're, they're trying to have that sort of same connection with me, too. They're looking at me going, Dad, look at us. Play with us. Don't walk by as you're going to the bathroom or whatever I'm doing. Go in the kitchen. Well, here, spend some time with us. And so, yeah, these magical moments that we spend. And, and sometimes they're over an instant. But I, I, I love what you're saying because you were in a, a bit of a mess with your, your, your dog. I almost wish it was a different name besides dogs because I think... You, you did say something like a phrase, husky, husky but also... Oh, my, oh my pet gosh, kids, my dog your, kids? Yeah, your dog kids. I'm not kidding. Some of my friends that have dogs, they are like a, a such a blessing to their lives. Mm -hmm. And I see the connection. If I didn't travel so much, I would get a dog, but I, I travel too much. And so I can't, But but what a blessing that... A pet kid can be, but you you had to you had to rise up and take inventory and say, "Come on, Chris, step up your attitude here." There's there's still some magic in the middle of this tough situation. Yeah. So I think we're helping people today. I think we're telling them that in the midst of their setback, they don't have to sit there, don't settle there, don't cement yourself in that setback, but get up. That life is still magical. Life is still good. No matter what you're facing, it could be really crappy stuff that there are still some great moments. And right when you think life is not great, look around at kids, pay attention to them at Target or Walmart or the shopping center and see that they're still moving. They're still flowing. They got a look in their eye. They're still asking for ice cream and toys. And even though your life feels like it sucks, look at the look at the future meaning these kids coming up man 
Yeah, we got to get back to that wonderment, that curiosity, that love of life. And I, and I try and look in my dog's eyes. I try and spend time with them. I try and connect. And just like we we used to talked about with the wake up uh, point, several things. I just want to touch on some of the chapters here. And people should really check this out in the book. You touch on parenting, love relationships, friendships, work career, money, health. And then you do some summaries and you have in there a miracle mentality workbook as well. Yes, I do. We put a lot of work into this and a lot of money into this. I, I put a lot of my own personal money on this, even though I'm with a big company, Harper Collins. I put a lot of my own personal money to get the right researchers to take this book to this level. I am, I am so excited about this book. And I, I get to be around a lot of bright people like yourself. And so some of my people that they, they do things at a crazy level. What they've come back and said about this book is really touched my heart. Holy crap, Tim. This is not just a bunch of fluff. Like you, you, you dug deep and you made me really take inventory in my life and even write things down. So this is for the, for the purchase. It's worth it. That's why some people are buying a thousand at a time. I don't know of the books, that someone could say, yeah, I know people that are buying a thousand at a time. It's usually people that have a lot of employees. But why don't you buy two? Do a twofer. Get one for you and do one, because of what your friend said, to be a life lifter. Mm-hmm. That'd be a cool thing, right, Chris? Definitely. If Definitely. people if people did one for themselves and one for somebody else. Mm-hmm. That's Pay what happened forward. on Clubhouse. That's what happened on Clubhouse. People started going wild. And one guy said, I'm going to buy five. Then the guy said, I'm buying 50. Then, the, then it went up. They started going, I'm buying 500. I'm buying 500. It just took off. I love that platform. It's so awesome. So as we uh, go out, Tim, anything more you want to touch on or share with us before we go? I just want to tell you, I enjoy your work. And I look forward to get to know you better. And maybe we'll collaborate and do some brilliant stuff, kind of like Ebony and Ivory. Mm-hmm. It's a song. Yeah, I know. I grew yeah. up in that. I grew All up right. in the 80s, too. Yeah. <laughs> and McCartney. so I'm, I'm proud of you, Chris, and your journey and who you are. And then I'm sure you've had times where you failed and had to get yourself back up. And thank you for doing that and spreading the love. And it's a privilege to be on your show today. Thank you. Down. And I'm proud of you, too. And thank you for spending time with us today, inspiring us and taking us to the next level. You're welcome. There you go. Thanks very much, Tim. It's been awesome to have you on. We're all going to be ordering your book. Order Tim's book up from uh, wherever you want on the uh, interwebs. Give us your plugs before I go out too, Tim, so people can look so you up Tim on the dot com. Tim com. So S T O R E Y dot com. But the Miracle Mentality book, look, the Miracle Mentality book, it's everywhere, it's, it's all over Target. It's all over Walmart. My friends, it's all over the airport stores. That's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. And so my friends who go to Target, a lot of them do, I guess, and Walmart, they're taking pictures nonstop and sending it. But you can get it on Amazon, and it's also on audio, and you get to hear my voice. There you go. I love that. You could just be like resting. I'm talking to you. I'm telling you about your life like that. I'm just reading to you. I love it when authors do their own audio books. I love Heck it. Yes. Cause you, there's just the richness and, and, and nativeness to it where came from my no soul. No one can speak those words except for the author, really. Came from opinion. my soul. Yeah. There you go. And then uh, we can watch for you to be with Oprah soon. Oprah All Oprah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've been with her many, many times. I'm in her new book. I get to speak on some of her tours in her documentary, all kinds of Oprah stuff. We're, me and her are real friends. Yeah, she's yeah. great. She's she's great. She's awesome. There you go, guys. So check it out. Order the book up from wherever you can. And as Tim said, order multiple copies. Give them away. Pay it forward. The Miracle Mentality. Tap into the source of magical transformation in your life. We definitely need that this time of thing and use it to lift other people as well. Thanks to my audience for tuning in. Be sure to go to youtube.com for chess Chris Foss. Hit that bell ding notification. Go to goodreads.com for chess Chris Foss. Go to all the LinkedIn accounts and all the Facebook groups and accounts and all the multiple accounts on Instagram as well. See us on Clubhouse. I think I've seen Tim on there quite a few times. So hopefully you'll be on there some more. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. You could tell me which groups I should get involved in because I don't know much about it. 
Sounds good. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be safe. Wear your mask. We'll see you guys next time.